Today we're going to read Horton Hears a Who by Dr. Seuss. Open page. Mm, there's Horton. Okay. Horton Hears a Who by Dr. Seuss. Horton Hears a Who? I saw it. I thought it said who. I wonder if this is the first page. Yep. yep. First page, you know, by the O. On the 15th of May, in the jungle of Newell, in the heat of the day, in the cool of the pool. He was splashing, enjoying the jungle's great. Can you move your finger? So I can. Enjoying the jungle's great joys when Horton the elephant heard a small noise. A small noise. Mm-hmm. You can do another page. Let me see. Is this the other one? Mm-hmm. So Horton stopped splashing. He looked toward the sound. That's funny. Thought Horton. There's no one around. Then he heard it again. Just a very faint yelp. As if some tiny person were calling for help. I'll help you, said Horton. But who are you? Where? He looked and he looked. He could see nothing there. But a small speck of dust blowing past through the air. I say, muttered Horton, I've never heard tell of a small speck of dust that is able to yell. Hold it. So you know what I think? Why I think that there must be someone on top of that small speck of dust. Some sort of creature of very small size, too small to be seen by an elephant's eyes. What? No one could live on a speck of dust. Mm. Right? I guess we'll see. Maybe, maybe it's an ant? I don't know. Ants are tiny. I'm just the next page. Yeah. Some poor little person who's shaking with fear that he'll blow into the pool. He has no way to steer. I'll just have to save him because after all, a person is a person, no matter how small. How could a person, how could a person be on the thing? It's a very small, small person. Now what is he doing? Is this the next page? Mm -hmm. So gently and using the greatest of care, the elephant stretched his great trunk through the air and he lifted the dust speck and carried it over and placed it down safe on a very soft clover. Here's a kangaroo. Mm -hmm. Kangaroos are funny. Put it down a little bit more. Hmm. Humped a voice. Twas a sour kangaroo. And the young kangaroo in her pouch said, Hmm, too. Why, that speck is as small as the head of a pin. A person on that? Why, there has never been. I would go turn it another way. <laughs> it looks like there's bees. There's bees. Oh. Believe me, said Horton. I tell you sincerely, 
My ears are quite keen, and I heard him quite clearly. I know there's a person down there, and what's more, quite likely there's two, even three, even four. Quite likely. A family, for all that we know. A family with children just starting to grow. So please, Horton said, as a favor to me, try not to disturb them. Just please let them be. There's one, two, three, four. Wait, there's one more. Mm -hmm. And you rhymed. What, why? You said four and more. <laughs> Guys, one, two, three, four. But there's more. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there's five. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, let's turn the page. Live. Uh, there's one, two, three, four, five. Alive. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you laughing? Because you're rhyming. I like it. <laughs> I think you're a fool, laughed the sour kangaroo. And the young kangaroo in her pouch said, Me too. You're the biggest blame fool in the jungle of Newell, and the kangaroos plunged into the cool of the pool. What terrible splashing, the elephant frowned. I can't let my very small persons get drowned. I've got to protect them. I'm bigger than they. So he plucked up the clover and hustled away. Why did he hustle away while a day? He wants to protect the little... Hey, the rhymes! I keep rhyming on everything. Now what were you going to say? He's trying to protect them. Believe me, said Horton. I tell you sincerely. My ears are quite keen and I heard him quite clearly. I know there's a person down there. And what's more... Did we already read this page? You turned the page the wrong way, silly. Oh. Sorry. It's okay. Through the high jungle. Okay, let's start again. Through the high jungle treetops, the news quickly spread. He talks to a dust speck. He's out of his head. Just look at him walk with that speck on that flower. And Horton walked, worrying, almost an hour. Should I put this speck down? Horton thought with alarm. If I do, these small persons may come to great harm. I can't put it down, and I won't. After all, a person's a person, no matter how small. So turn the page. Yeah, that's the right page. It's not. No, it's not. I'm trying to get this page. All right. This one. Then Horton stopped walking. The speck voice was talking. The voice was so faint he could just barely hear it. Speak up, please, said Horton. He put his ear near it. My friend, came the voice. You're a very fine friend. You've helped all us folks on this dust speck no end. You've saved all our houses, our ceilings and floors. You've saved all our churches and grocery stores. What? <laughs> hey, so that rhymes. Mind? <laughs> that rhymes too. That rhymes too, everything I say. Okay. Nope, the other way. Okay. Is this the next page? Yeah. You mean? Horton gasped. You have buildings there too? Oh yes, piped a voice. We most certainly do. I know. Go 
called the voice. I'm too small to be seen. But I'm mayor of a town that is friendly and clean. Our buildings to you would seem terribly small. But to us who aren't big, they are wonderfully tall. My town is called Whoville, for I am a who. And we who are all thankful and grateful to you. And Horton called back to the mayor of the town. You're safe now. Don't worry. I won't let you down. Wait, there's a city on that? Mm hmm How can there be a city on a crow or a speck of dust? A speck of dust is too small. Mm -hmm. So there won't be a big city. And there is. Oh my god. Look what's happening. Okay, can you keep it still so I can read? But just as he spoke to the mayor of the speck, three big jungle, jungle monkeys climbed up Horton's neck. The Wickersham brothers came shouting, What rot? This elephant's talking to who's who are not. There aren't any who's, and they don't have a mayor. And we're going to stop all this nonsense. So there. They're trying to grab it. Oh no! But they gotta believe him, right? Mm -hmm. Someone just got to believe them. Oh my god. Look what happened. They snatched Horton's clover. They carried it off to a black-bottomed eagle named Vlad Vladikov. A mighty strong eagle, a very swift wing. And they said, will you kindly get rid of this thing? And before the poor elephant could even speak, that eagle flew off with the flower in his beak. Oh, no. Oh, no. Which way did I turn it? No. Oh. This way? Mm-hmm. Why is it so uh, wet? No. All that late afternoon and far into the night, that black bottom bird flopped his wings in fast flight while Horton chased after with grooms, I mean, I can't read, over stones, their tattered, that tattered his toenails and battered his bones and begged, Please don't harm all my little folks who have as much right to live as us bigger folks do. But far, far beyond him, that eagle kept flapping and over his shoulder caught back. Quit your yapping. I'll fly the night through. I'm a bird. I don't mind it. And I'll hide this tomorrow well, you're where you'll never find it. <gasps> oh, no. I, I hope that I hope Corden can find it. Oh no, Corin's never go find it. Cause look at this. And at six fifty six the next morning, he did it. It sure was a terrible place that he hid it. He let that small clover drop somewhere inside of a great patch of clovers a hundred miles wide. Find that, sneered the bird. But I think you will fail. And he left with a flip of his black bottom tail. Oh no, he's never gonna find it, right? Mm -hmm. Cause, Cause he won't know which one's on it cause, cause they're all the same. You can't even tell which one's which. <gasps> but what about the speck? He can find it with the speck. Oh, looks like he's getting tired. See? I'll find it, cried Horton. I'll find it or bust. I shall find my friends on my small speck of dust. And clover by clover by clover with care. He picked up and searched them and called. Are you there? But clover by clover by clover he found that the one that he sought for was just not around. And by noon, poor old Horton, more dead than alive, had picked, searched, and piled up 9,005.
1,005. That's, That's a lot of clovers. Mm-hmm. But he still hasn't found any. I can see the piles. Oh, it looks like you found it. But the field is bald. <laughs> then, on through the afternoon, hour after hour, till he found them at last on the three millionth flower. <gasps> My Whoa! friends, cried the elephant, tell me, do tell. Are you safe? Are you sound? Are you whole? Are you well? What did it say? I don't know. We have to turn the page. Those were a lot of clovers. Uh, the field is so bald. Mm -hmm. All there is is piled. Mm, what's going on? From down on the speck came the voice of the mayor. We've really had trouble, much more than our share, when that black bottom birdie let go and we dropped. We landed so hard that our clocks have all stopped. Our teapots are broken, our rocking chair smashed, and our bicycle tires all blew up when we crashed. So Horton, please, pleaded that voice of the mayor's, will you stick by us? Hold on. Will you stick by us? Who's while we're making repairs? Of course, Horton answered. Of course I will stick. I'll stick by you small folks through thin and through thick. What? What have you stopped? That's the end of that page. Oh. I see. I see. Mm. And there's leaks. Mm hmm the voice. For almost two days you've run wild and insisted on chatting with persons who've never existed. Such carryings on in our peaceful jungle. We've had quite enough of your bellowing bungle and I'm here to state, stop the kangaroo, that your silly nonsensical game is all through. And the young kangaroo in her pouch said, me too. Believes her, right? Mm -hmm. uh, oh, uh oh! Ah. With the help of the Wickersham brothers and dozens of Wickersham uncles and Wickersham cousins and Wickersham in-laws who've helped I've engaged, you're going to be roped and you're going to be caged. And as for your dust back, huh? That we shall boil in a hot steaming kettle of bezel nut oil. Boil it? gasped Horton. Oh, that you can't do. It's all full of persons. They'll prove it to you. How will they prove it to them? Mm -hmm. I hope. What do you think they can do? I don't know. What they can do, what? Horton or the other one? So the other ones can believe Horton. <gasps> Hey, look. Mr. Mayor, Mr. Mayor, Horton called. Mr. Mayor, you've got to prove now that you really are there. So call a big meeting. Get everyone out. Make every who holler. Make every who shout. Make every who scream. If you don't, every who is going to end up in a bezel nut stew. Oh. Everyone's calling on there. And down on the dust bag, the scared little mayor 
quickly called a big meeting in Whoville Town Square. And his people cried loudly. They cried out in fear. We are here! We are here! We are here! We are here! That's a lot. We're here! We're here! We're here! I The elephant smiled. That was clear as a bell. You kangaroos surely heard that very well. All I heard, snapped the big kangaroo, was the breeze and the faint sound of wind through the far distant trees. I heard no small voices and you didn't either. And the young kangaroo in her pouch said, me neither. She keeps agreeing with the big, with That's the big. Mama. Huh? That's her mama. She keeps uh, agreeing with her mommy, right? Mm -hmm. I don't understand what's going on. Here. Grab him, they shouted, and cage the big dope. Lasso his stomach with ten miles of rope. Tie the tight, tie the knots tight so he'll never shake loose. Then dunk that dumb speck in that bezel nut juice. Horton fought back with great vigor. Horton fought back with great vigor and vim, but the Wickersham gang was too many for him. They beat him. They mauled him. They started to haul him into his cage, but he managed to call to the mayor. Don't give up. I believe in you all. A person's a person, no matter how small, and you very small persons will not have to die if you make yourselves heard. So come on now and try. Whoa, they are trying. They are trying. The mayor grabbed a tom-tom. He started to smack it and all over Whoville, they whooped up a racket. They rattled tin kettles. They beat on brass pans, on garbage pail tops and old cranberry cans. They blew on bazookas and blasted great toots, on clarinets, oomphas, and boompas and flutes. Whoa, they're definitely gonna be heard, right? Yeah, I think so. The next page. Yeah. Great gusts of loud, well, let's do it. Great gusts of loud racket rang high through the air. They rattled and shook the whole sky, and the mayor calls up through the howling mad hullabaloo. Hey, Horton, how's this? Is our sound coming through? And Horton called back, I can hear you just fine, but the kangaroo's ears aren't as strong quite as mine. They don't hear a thing. Are you sure all your boys are doing their best? Are they all making noise? Are you sure every who down in Whoville is working? Quick, look through your town. Is there anyone shirking? Who's shirking? Like someone that's not doing what they're supposed to be doing. Through the town rushed the mayor, from the east to the west, but everyone seemed to be doing his best. Everyone seemed to be yipping or yapping. Everyone seemed to be beeping or bipping, but it wasn't enough, all this ruckus and roar. He had to find someone to help him make more. He raced through each building. He searched floor to floor. I hope you can find someone. All right? Mm -hmm. I thought, yeah, I hope he can find someone with door to door. Yeah. That sounds like it rhymes. But that doesn't rhyme. <laughs> and just as he felt he was getting nowhere and almost about to give up in despair, he suddenly burst through a door 
and that mayor discovered one shirker quite hidden away in the Fairfax Apartments, apartment 12J, a very small, very small shirker named Jojo was standing, just down, standing and bouncing a yo-yo, not making a sound, not a yip, not a chirp. And the mayor rushed inside and he grabbed the young twerp. Come on, twerp, but what? That is not right. Okay. And he climbed with the lad of the Eiffelberg Tower. This, cried the mayor, is your town's darkest hour. The time for all who's, who have blood that is red to come to the aid of their country, he said. We've got to make noise in greater amounts. So open your mouth, lad, for every voice counts. Thus he spoke as he climbed. When he got to the top, the lad cleared his throat and he shouted out, Yop! Oh, it looks like going to look. See? Look. And that yop, that one small extra yop, put it over. Finally, at last, from the speck on that clover, their voices were heard. They rang out clear and clean, and the elephant smiled. Do you see what I mean? They proved they are persons, no matter how small, and their whole world was saved by the smallest of all. How true! Yes, how true, said the big kangaroo. And from now on, you know what I'm planning to do? From now on, I'm going to protect them with you. And the young kangaroo in her pouch said, Me too. Oh, I think I was right. Me too. That looks like it. Me too. From sun in the summer, from rain when it's fallish, I'm going to protect them, no matter how smallish. No, no. Okay. My, wait, wait, wait. One last page. One last page. Okay, let's see. Red. Boom. Oh. Gordon. The end. We the hope you liked our story. Where did the the end? I'm just saying that. Make sure to follow us on YouTube, just because. Follow us on Instagram, on Facebook, and hear our stories. Bye. Bye. Sorry that we didn't do story time for a long time. 